Okay, so let's do um, some analysis on this surface. So what I've done is I've added a curve and a point so that we can test, say, distance to these objects from all these bricks. So this is a typical sort of attractor setup, right? So we can, we can start by getting a distance. We measure for each of these surfaces we need some sort of point to measure to so we can get the centroid to an area that gives me these center points that I'm going to measure to okay so then Let's, let's try to visualize that in some way. If we have a distance, let's say all within a specific distance will, will give a certain color. So we need to split them up. Let's get a dispatch. <coughs> we have these a list of these surfaces. Let's say if this distance is smaller than some number, We'll split them up. So this num these numbers are all over the place. If I get the bounds, I can see what that is. Now it's between 34 and 429. So that's um, that's okay. We can use a distance between those, but um, we can also make it a little more easier to uh, we can make it easier to understand if we remap these numbers. Let's say that this distance I want to remap between from 34 to 429. Now I'm going to turn it into numbers that are between 0 and 1. So then that gives me all numbers that are in the same sort of relationship that these distances were, but are more um, more proportional or um, percentages. So then I can say, okay, if this number is smaller than 0.5 or 50% of all the rest of them, then I can use that as a true false value to test these with. So if I want to visualize that, we get a custom preview for each one of these. And a swatch. One of them white. One of them black or grayish color. So you can have, okay, these are all the bricks that are within a specific distance of that point, right? Easy to understand. And if I wanted to use, say, the curve, I could do the same thing. Get a distance by curve closest point. We have the curve with the centroids from this. So we can plug in the curve and get a sort of path through here within a specific distance of this line. So one thing one thing you can see is that this is quite a large chunk of this. It's 50% the distance from whatever the closest one is to the furthest one. So that's falling somewhere in the middle. We can turn this down. We can make it a much smaller path. But it's also still pretty well defined. So what happens if we want to blur that out or make it a little fuzzy? Say if this is grass and this is brick, if we want these to blend into each other a little bit more. So let's let's see if we can adjust that. What I'm going to do is add some randomness to this. Yeah, that fuzziness. I'm going to give. Um, the ability to blur this out. So I'm going to add a random number to each one of these. So 
still need to know how many items there are in this link, that list. I'll make a random number for each one. All right? So then I'm going to add these values together the remapped one and the random one. Oh, sorry. This is the remapped one. So then I say if this result is smaller than 2, then be visible. You can see, so that's definitely starting to make it less defined of a path, but it's also making it uh, too random, or this random value is maybe too, too strong of a number. It's doing too much work. So I need to turn down the proportion of this one with respect to that one. So let's... Instead of mapping this value between 0 and 1, I can give it a bigger domain. Construct a domain from 0, say to 12. So what that's going to do is when I add this up, these numbers are going to be from 0 to 12, and this number is going to be between 0 and 1. 1, 0 and 1, and so the result is going to be between 0 and 13, All right? So you can see um, this number is no longer working between 0 and 1, it needs to go between 0 and 13. So that I'm going to add those domains together to get a, a total number to work with. So I can say and 12 and the 1 together from this one, which gives me that 13. And we have our percentage over here. So this number times whatever percent we want will be our second number. So at 0.5 is 50%. It's roughly the same sort of scales we had before. We can make it smaller, but you can also see that these edges are a lot more um, ill-defined, or um, there's more of a gradient across that. And that's that's because of the ratio between this 0 and 1 of the random number and the 0, 12 of that. So if I turn that up, it becomes more defined, more defined because that random number is not not so much uh, as big of a, a value within that within that number. And if I turn that down, it becomes more random to the point of complete randomness. So it gives me a little more capability of adjusting that. In the next video, I'll, I'll try a couple more um, analysis types that might be useful.